Hi, I'm Jace Winger, your flight instructor for today. We'll be running through the full lesson plan, but if you're already familiar with some of the basics, you can talk to me about skipping ahead. Before we begin, I need to perform a few routine physical tests. Regulations, you know. Please move your head as far up or down as you can. Okay, now please walk a few steps. Okay, now uh, do a few jumping jacks, please. Finally, a few squats, please. Right, you seem to be in good physical shape. Yes? I'll need to set everything up. Please give me a minute. This next thing is something you are going to be using a lot. I've marked a remote location for you to fly to. Don't worry, I don't expect you to crawl there at your base speed. First, please align your ship so it points roughly towards the target. Now, activate travel mode. Depending on your engine type, it may take a little time to get started. your speed bar just below the crosshairs. You will keep accelerating for a while until you reach your ship's top travel speed. You've probably noticed other modes in the list when you activated this one. Each mode has its special use and only one mode can be active at a time. That was too early. Let's start again. First, please align your ship so it points roughly towards the target. Now, activate travel mode. Depending on your engine type, it may take a little time to get started. Turn off the mode the same way you turned it on. You are now coasting, which means a few things. First, your ship is decelerating much more slowly than it normally would. Second, steering is easy again. Give it a try now. Third, you've probably noticed that your ship keeps flying in the same direction. You can come to a stop much more quickly by actively decelerating. This automatically re-engages the safety limits on steering. Try it now. As for the travel direction, any strafe movement will revert that to the behavior you're used to. You can also drop out of travel mode more quickly, skipping the coasting phase. Let's try this now. Please reactivate travel mode. Now wait until you've built up some speed. Whenever you're ready, quickly drop out of travel mode. Great! The next part will take place some distance from here, so let's take a break and let the autopilot do the hard work for now. The autopilot automatically navigates to the current objective. It engages travel when appropriate and makes use of gates, accelerators and highways. It even avoids obstacles in the way. Uh, well, mostly, which is why you still need to be at the controls. 
You may notice that it sometimes turns travel mode off when everything seems wide open to you. The safeties are on a bit of a hair trigger, probably to keep insurance rates from skyrocketing. While we wait, let's check out your logbook. There are several menus you can access this way. Open the one that's highlighted now. Here you have access to details about your current status and statistics. The logbook is highlighted. Open it now. As you can see, there are several categories. You can select one to filter the entries or look at all of them at once. Most of the tips you've seen up until now have been added to the logbook. You can always go back and reread them if you feel like you've missed or forgotten something. Take your time looking around these menus. Close them when you're ready to move on. If you're getting bored, you can disable the autopilot at any time and fly the rest of the way yourself. ship next to you. Its colour on your HUD indicates that it's not hostile. Please select it as your target. Match speed with your target. By the way, matching speed is even possible when both you and your target are in travel mode. Now activated your primary weapon. The small dots that have just appeared indicate where the weapons are currently aiming. They will automatically track your current target as long as it's close enough. There are a handful of targets in front of you. Their HUD color indicates that they are enemies. Note that the HUD markers of some targets are smaller. These targets are currently outside your weapon range. Select the closest enemy target. A new HUD element has appeared right the center of the target. This is the aim ahead indicator. It shows you where you need to aim, which is especially useful if the target is moving. Slowly cycle through all the targets. Cargo drone. When a target outside your weapon range has been selected, you can see the weapon indicators becoming darkened. The aim ahead indicator also changes its appearance. Select the closest enemy target again and shoot at it until it's destroyed. Keep destroying the targets. You'll need to move closer in order to hit some of them. If you look to the right of your crosshair, you will see bars next to your weapons that gradually fill up when you fire. This is heat. It automatically dissipates when you stop firing. This happens more slowly if there are multiple weapons cooling down at the same time. The weapon's just overheated. You will not be able to fire until they've cooled to a safe temperature. Cargo drone. This target is much sturdier than the others. Look at the blue bar above the target. This is its shield strength. After a few seconds without damage, it will begin to recharge. All shields work on this, including your own. I've now activated your secondary weapon, a missile launcher. It's loaded with a type of guided missile that requires a target lock. Please select the target in front of you. You can now see a lock being required. You may fire when ready. The target has dropped something. Fly right at it to pick it up. 